And still on national matters, the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, has called on the legislature to fast track the process of amending the Electoral Act. The NLC President Ayuba Waba made the call during a roundtable meeting with election stakeholders in Abuja on electoral reforms. Waba says there is a need to avoid a repeat of the scenario before the last general elections when the president refused to sign the amended Electoral Act. He also urged political stakeholders to speedily send their input to the National Assembly to enable the lawmakers to finish the amendment of the Act before the next general elections. In the last dispensation, we were not able to, the president was not able to ascend to the amendment that were made because they were at the eve of election. And therefore, having uh, uh, such uh, processes at the eve of election, I think, uh, will not actually provide uh, the necessary environment and understanding that is required actually for citizens to participate and also for the law to even become effective. So I think it's high time and that's why NLC is organizing this round table so that all of us will be on the same page and so that all of us also we know that uh, we should be responsible uh, to have people that will actually end our mandate and uh, also to continue to ensure that the process is credible, uh, the process is transparent and the vote of every Nigerian will come. The National Assembly and the Executive have an opportunity you know, to write their names in gold and leave a lasting legacy. To fast track this process and make sure that the electoral amendment process is concluded by the same time. So, I make political parties and other stakeholders can prepare way ahead of the elections. We don't want to see postponement in our elections anymore. We don't want to see, you know, these challenges and these uncertainties with respect to electoral laws. So, if the National Assembly is truly really committed, then they should be able to pass the amendment by December 2020. And on this matter, we are now joined by legal practitioner and public affairs analyst Bolandi Ulugbani. Good to have you, sir. Uh, good morning. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, let's begin by asking, how do you see this call from NLC and the group Yaga Africa? What's your thoughts on that? Well, the move by uh, NLC and Yaga is a well-timed and well-intentioned move. Because electoral reform is at the core of our democracy. And without appropriate and timely electoral reforms, what we are calling a democracy is just a mere shenanigan. And again, will be what's the guarantee that what the president failed to sign in the past will be signed this time? Well, if we take this from the point of view that the last electoral reform amendment attempt was close to the election, and so may have been difficult for the government to implement if passed into law. This time around, mm -hmm. there's enough time for proper implementation and the right infrastructure to be put in place. So if the president refuses to ascend to the bill this time around, there's a provision in the Constitution that allows the National Assembly to override his lack of assent or denial of assent after 30 days and pass into law that reform, whether he likes it or not. Mm. All right. Uh, talking about reforms, I'm interested to know what kinds of reforms will you know, you'll be seeking, if I may put it that way, this time in the provisions? Well, the reform that is most vital is to ensure that without a political party structure, anybody can aspire to any office in the land. I'm talking about independent candidature. There should be a reform for independent candidature. There ought to be a reform for the type of voting, electronic voting, that allows you to vote from any location, anywhere in this country at any time. Mm -hmm. So apart from card reader, which must be implemented, take, having you go to the polling booth with your, with your voter's card and being able to vote, you should be able to vote mm. online from any location, anywhere, anytime in Nigeria. These are the type of reforms that take us to the next level. Right. Well, I mean, thirdly, on the issue of campaign funds, the parties make nomination and the buying of forms a money spinner. So at the point of purchasing a form, or nomination form to, to any elective office, you're already outpriced. When they are making the House of Reps, 5 million, presidency, 30 something million, the governorship, uh, 40 something. You know, these type of things are, are inimical to democratic ethos and practices. Mm. 
So there's got to be a control by law. And then the issue of campaigns. How much can the political party or candidate spend? Is it a matter of there's no ceiling and then the person with the highest amount of money or highest bidder becomes the one who gets to the position? All these things need to be controlled. Right. And then deployment of uh, security agencies and security apparatus who more or less at every election aid and abet the powers that be to make the election go in a particular way. There must be an independent body, maybe INEC, that determines where they are deployed to and what they are used for. Hmm. These are the reforms that are needed. All right. But, but Barista, you will also remember that the Eighth Assembly was in a sort of running battle with the presidency, you know, which was another factor for the refusal. Now, do you think this Ninth Assembly will still bring those in sessions? Well, this Ninth Assembly is a, an assembly of like minds. Like minds with the executives. I've hardly had them being critical of anything that the executive arm does, except that which is taken out of uh, context or that comes unexpectedly, like the issue of the Niger Delta Development Commission, where revelations happened and they, 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 they scurried and ran around to, to control the release of information. So this night assembly, with all due respect, quote and unquote, and I take personal responsibility, appears to be a rubber stamp. I don't think there'll be any divergence of opinion or any attempt at scrutinizing or doing oversight functions against the executive with regard to this bill. Hmm. Well, let, let's stay on, on this matter a little bit more. Uh, if I ask, what's the process of legislation like? Is it going to go through the legislative process afresh or it will uh, continue from there? No, it ought to go afresh. This is a ninth assembly, different from the eighth assembly. There's got to be the tabling of a bill, and then that bill will be debated uh, indoor, that is at uh, committee level, then brought to the plenary, which is the general sitting of the House or Senate. And then when it is passed by majority, it is sent across from the House of Reps to the Senate for concurrent uh, voting, and then finally moved on to the table of the president for him to sign after both houses have, you know, have voted on it. Mm. So at that point, the president has the constitutional duty either to sign or to object. If he objects or refuses to assent to the bill, then the House, if in majority they feel that it is in the overall interest of Nigeria, can override his uh, objection and uh, pass into law after 30 days. Mm. All right. In, I mean, in the spirit of seeking for solutions and answers, what are you most hopeful about as far as this uh, matter is concerned? Ah, there's not much hope. Mm. What I see is that politicians will always do what is in the best interest of their political ambitions. Uh, it's not about whether we get a free and fair election. Uh, or whether democracy is strengthened. If you look at the situation and whatever is proposed as a bill, and it runs counter to their intentions and ambitions, it may be tweaked to favor their interests. It would take a statesman mm -hmm. to override personal interest and to substitute that with the national interest to do things properly. Right. Thank you so very much, Barista Ulubani, for your thoughts there and for your contributions, as always. Do keep safe out there. Thank you. Right. We continue with the breakfast. In what seems to be an end to the leadership crisis in the University of Lagos, it is yet to come regarding the removal of the institution's vice chancellor and appointment of the new acting vice chancellor. Plus TV Africa correspondent Jacinta Obuku brings us an update. Arriving at the Senate building of the institution, some members of non-academic staff union NASU were seen waiting to welcome the new acting vice chancellor. Amid the leadership tussle between the governing council and some members of Congress Union of the University regarding the removal of Professor Oluwatoyo Gundipe, the atmosphere is filled with suspense. After some hours wait, the new appointed vice chancellor, Professor Theophilus Shoyombo, arrived at the Senate building and for the first time addressed the public. We are all familiar with the current situation. On the 12th 
of August 2020, the Governing Council of the University of Lagos removed the uh, former Vice Chancellor and announced my appointment as the Acting Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos. The appointment was with immediate effect and I saw it as a call to service to the University of Lagos. My major focus will be on staff welfare. While addressing the public, he stressed on the preparation of students returning back to the campus, as well as the good welfare of the staff, especially the non-academic staff. We are missing our students. But in bringing them back, we'll ensure that we comply with all the NCDC and hygiene and health practices. During the press briefing, he also addressed the seeming disunity between some members of the Congress Union and the Governing Council of the University as regards to the needed support to run his new office. I can assure you that we've received messages of support and goodwill from the majority, from a large cross-section of members of the university community. Professor Shoyombo further stated that there are no deputy vice chancellors approved by the governing council. Jacinta Obiuku, Plus TV Africa. Thank you, Jacinta, for that update. And the breakfast continues shortly after this break. Stay with us.